Hello everybody. We are starting our live session uh, today. Waiting for Ignacio to join and then um, we will be starting. Hey. Hi, Ignacio. <laughs> I'm getting better at joining. <laughs> I know. I think we're all getting better at it. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, uh, as we wait for more folks to join our uh, live session today, um, this is going to be the third of kind of the who we are, who is the Hill Project, what is our work like um, a series. And the other two, you can find them on our IGTV channel or you can check out the YouTube channel uh, under something like who we are, who we are or meet uh, something like this, um, where we talk about kind of how we came to this work and what is our approach like. Um, but today, I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about because we are going to be covering uh, 60 Survivor, our most popular program yet, uh, probably the longest running program we've had. Uh, and uh, we are going to be offering a special webinar uh, version of Sexy Survivor in September. So we are here to talk a little bit more with Ignacio about how they came up with the idea when they started it uh, a decade ago, over a decade ago. Uh, what was it like back then to, you know, even talk about the, the, these issues and uh, all all of that. So I'm going to pick your brain, Ignacio, about mm -hmm. all, of, all of the good stuff. <laughs> uh, and just in case uh, you're not familiar with Sexy Survivor, Usually it's a three hour work, workshop that as Ignacio says, it could easily be done in a day yeah. or longer. Um, and that's where we do some really uh, close work with survivors, usually smaller groups, um, and uh, kind of go into the depth of what does it take uh, to reclaim our sex lives, our romantic lives, our relationships after uh, surviving sexual violence in childhood and adulthood. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah, with that, uh, I want to ask you, Ignacio, what, how did Sexy Survivor came to be? What's the story? <laughs> well, it's a very, you know, simple story. Just like, you know, just like anybody else. I was working on my own healing um, from um, CSA. Uh, and one of the biggest, I mean, one of the biggest hurdles I had was around sex. Uh, so it was um, trying to understand what healthy sex looked like because i really had no idea um i uh i thought i knew you know watching movies you know friends talking uh, but when you start off with you know something um so you know violent when you're young it really like alters a lot of, of things so i kept on trying to figure out what i was doing wrong or what was you know what was wrong with me it was like this thing um but then i uh just started thinking about this this idea about you know most people think that they're the only one feeling a certain thing we always feel alone and isolated i felt alone but logically i knew i was not alone <laughs> i knew that there were other people feeling this but people are not talking about it right because there's it's so loaded so much shame around sex so much shame around being a survivor um if someone is a survivor isn't a survivor it, all of these things kind of come up and so I just wanted to talk to other people. I wanted to, to see how other people were dealing with this. And so I talked to close friends and chosen family members. And um, I had been a part of the Creating Change Conference for a while. Uh, back in the day, I used to work at um, the uh, anti-violence project. I mean, the anti-violence project, the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force in New York. I also worked for the anti-violence project. but. Um, uh, I worked for them a, a while ago and, um, you know, I was a part of the conference. So uh, this uh, one year, uh, I think, I think it was actually when the sex track started, um, uh, Jamie Grant um, started doing the sex track at Creating Change, which was huge because it was 
it was a time where, uh, if anybody knows that Creating Change is an LGBT activist conference, the largest in the nation. And it was actually the first time, I think, that they had like a very dedicated space to talking about sex, which is so wild, that at a queer conference, <laughs> that that wasn't like highlighted in some way. So uh, when Jamie reached out to me to say, hey, you're doing this work, I want you to be a part of this, I was like, oh, I need to create a new workshop for this, you know, for this conference because the sex track, this is perfect. And so I thought up, um, I was thinking about the workshop and thinking about this idea of uh, community healing, you know, because I felt so alone and I knew I wasn't. And um, I wanted to just get into a space with people that pe we could just say the things, just say the things, uh, say what the hell we're afraid of, say what we want to do and also see the differences, right? There might be some of us that are very sexual and some of us that are totally fearful of sex. I wanted to get us all in a room and really just share um, the, the pros, the cons, anything, you know. And so when thinking about the, the title, I was like, oh, my God, what do I want to call this? Because nobody wants to talk about sexual violence. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, CSA and all this stuff. You know, it's like CSA isn't sexy to talk about. So I was like, when I said that, I was like, ah, oh, sexy survivor. Two words that usually don't go together. Right, talking being being a survivor and being sexy. So how can I be a sexy, however you define it, survivor? Right, whether it is um, getting in tune with your own body or sharing that with others. And it was huge around boundaries because it's something that comes up a lot. And so through that, through create a uh, sexy survivor, I updated the. Um, this uh, sexuality model that I have been grappling with and like tweaking for years, I was just trying to create this kind of sexuality model to um, kind of visually show people that we limit our understanding of sex, intimacy, love, and fucking. And so we need to broaden that to give ourselves more room to, to explore more than our brain has allowed us to, to know exists. Right, exactly. You know what, even you talk about that, you know, the fact that it, it, at a, the largest queer trans conference, activist conference in the country, conversation around sex or even survivorship is still like wasn't really prominent. And unfortunately, I mean, I look at it that in, in my career in the past decade, it has been the same. It's like the mm -hmm. idea of being a good queer, being a good uh, you know, trans non-binary person uh, means that you're not too sexual. Right. In fact, and, and, I, and it makes sense, right? Because there is, that identity has been flagged so much as being sexual and then dismissed yes. that I feel like there is this tendency for us to want to just say, oh, we, you know, we, we are not, uh, we are not that. We are not sexual right. beings the way that you are thinking of us. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's still something that we continuously work around. And then you add to that the layer of being a survivor. Right. Being a, and then being a queer survivor, being a trans survivor. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how that complicates, you know, the difficulty of even allowing yourself, oh, yes, I here's my relationship with sex, whether I don't want it or I love it, I don't want to have it all the time. Right. You know, it's, it's all of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that popped out for me talking about, you know, you've worked with so many survivors around the country, so many different groups of people from students to parents, advocates, uh, professionals. And over the years, uh, when I first started working with you, you gave me these, uh, I think you mailed me like two big boxes of <laughs> Written stuff, which was these are from the workshops where survivors had written what their what the impact of their survivorship was, right. and then what their what their hopes were for survivorship. And I went through them and organized everything, and came up with these, you know, um, all of these words, all of these impacts and hopes, mm -hmm. uh, which then Rida, uh, our wonderful colleague, uh, mm -hmm. made them into a word cloud that you can see it on our Instagram page. And what I love about it is that the biggest word as in the most frequent word that is, shows up in the middle is community, right? And that goes to the heart of what you are describing, is that sexy survivor is about community. Mm -hmm. It's like all the ways that when, when I first um, attended your sexy survivor workshop, all the ways in which I felt broken mm -hmm. in my sex life, in my relationships, in my, the ways that I connected around my boundaries and consent, 
all of that felt like this is wonderful like there are other people yeah. like this struggle is it makes so much sense you know suddenly i felt like i belonged and i wasn't alone and that is such a powerful feeling mm. you know i ne- i never forget it when i left the session feeling like this is this work is powerful and mm. what a shame that 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 space like that is so yeah. rare yeah. Right? yeah i'm i'm thinking about the very very first um um sexy survivor i did which was at creating change and you know, i think there was some kind of talk around yeah do you think people are going to show up you know because you know the topic and i was nervous and with the sexy survivor there's always a panel that i have a panel of survivors that share um some of their hopes and their impacts as well to to kind of model and i've had a variety of people really share their stories that's been you that's um, been um um Renair um there's uh Yesenia Lewis um Amita uh, Swadin you know so many people um um that have participated in it so i've partnered with a lot of folks um to do that and the the very first one i was like blown away i was saddened and blown away at the same time because uh, there was um it was standing room only there were more than 100 and something people in the room and you know like a third of the room walked in already crying just crying it was just happy to be in the space so it was like a third of the room sobbing and i had tissues all over the place and everything another section of the room was just like yes i want to be here this is great let's start talking you know and another group saying like i don't know if i should be here so it was just like a mix of people but just to see so many people wanting or or even you know hoping that they could be a part of that space meant so much you know and every single every year that I do that every time I do that workshop it not only I don't I feel more than a facilitator of that workshop I feel like it's continually healing me too because every time I share a piece of my story I sometimes you know I've shared new pieces that I've never shared before and pieces that that I never even uh, made a connection on. So this work is not only about me saying, "Oh, I'm helping other people heal." This is this is like my healing work as well. This helps me constantly uh, get a better sense of myself um in relationship to other survivors and not feel so alone and isolated like CSA has been portrayed like this isolated thing that's not connected to anything else in the world, right? Right, exactly. Uh and that's that is so powerful. I feel similarly that every time I go to a sex survivor session even as a facilitator, uh I leave with this sense of discovery. Hmm. You know, this sense of discovery about my the feelings i didn't know i had the ways in which i was relating to myself yeah. and um and that that is so beautiful so we are because of all of that we are mm-hmm. going to be offering a sexy survivor not at a, as a 3 hour workshop but as a 2 hour webinar so i want to tell you a little bit about that difference of uh why that is this is the 10 year anniversary of sexy survivor and um basically there's less time and because of that we won't be engaging uh the audience and the participants as much as we usually do in a workshop session workshops are usually smaller there is room for folks to participate and speak about uh you know their experiences their opinions their takes on things but uh this will provide more of an anonymous um uh kind of feeling folks can submit their written questions and also comment in chat but uh for folks who want to kind of get a feel of you know what is it even like i mean this is what i like about sexy survivor you don't have to identify as a survivor right. to be a part of it you know i i look at my own journey of like how i came to identify as a survivor it's been a really long journey of like you know taking baby steps towards really reclaiming that word and not taking pride in that word mm-hmm. um i i i love that i'm a survivor you know i i can see all the ways in which it has made me me yeah. and i love that um so we want to encourage um folks who if you have loved ones who identify as survivors if you're not sure you want to are a survivor uh if uh you know especially queer trans masculine folks men uh folks that are usually kind of uh not um 
you know, included or not welcome in a lot of survivor spaces because so many of those spaces are geared towards uh, cis women and especially white cis women. So we really want this webinar and all of our programming to be catering to, uh, you know, a, a, a wider audience. Um, and yeah, and also we will be introducing, uh, you know, as you mentioned, their sexuality model, yeah. uh, which has been, we have been doing some work on it together and we, we have a new upgraded version of it. Uh, it is called Rashim. It's the Rivera Azad sexual healing integration model. And uh, we will be presenting that very excited <laughs> about it, uh, for the first time at the Sexy Survivor webinar uh, on September 18th. In case you don't know, you can go to our link on Instagram and get your ticket uh, before it's too late. <laughs> it won't be late. You can get it <laughs> anytime. <laughs> um, but yeah, so with all of that, Ignacio, I want to, you know, we have had a lot of conversations. We always try to connect survivorship with what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. And so I want to know. Where do you see the future of sexy survivors, survivorship, and just like with everything that's going on in the world today, mm -hmm. right? Um, kind of the avalanche of crises that are happening around us. Uh, where do you see sexy survivor going from here? How is it, you know, how is it relevant to kind of this larger, larger world we're living in? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's absolutely relevant because even though, you know, we're talking about a sexy survivor, uh, not, this is not only for survivors, and um, we're not just talking about healing um, uh, as a survivor, but we're also talking about healing just as a human living in this world in rape culture, right? So it's about healing your ideas of everything you ever fucking learned <laughs> about sex and gender and all of this stuff, right? And relearning and relearning. So to me, Sexy Survivor, especially with Rashim and the way that we have reconstructed it, it is a model that really um, shows uh, the, the vision of how um, human sexuality um, needs to be or should be talked about um, and um, integrated as a life skill um, for everyone, right? This should be a life skill uh, because it is I often say that the, the, the way, the one thing that we have in common as human beings is that um, we all want connection and we all want to survive. Those are the two things. So uh, in wanting connection, we want community and we want the skills in order to have sustainable, you know, beautiful, respectful connections. That's where we're missing. I think we jump all over that you know we jump over that and go right to the sex or the fear of sex don't get pregnant you can get hiv you can be a slut da, 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 all of these things and really we actually don't have a clue as to how to uh, relate to one another to communicate to one another and to me that also is very much connected to family of origin or you know if uh, um any, any um, unit or family or people that are around you as you are growing up, right? Uh, that kind of structure and the, the, the role of power and power dynamics within that. But not only that, it also, to me, goes even further in talking about our relations. This is about getting in right relation with each other and getting in right relation with Mother Earth. I think this is very much all connected. And when we talk about, like, climate change and we talk about natural disasters and things like that, there is a connection because as we know, when natural disasters happen, um, violence spikes. It is like the time when violence happens. And so if we know that, if we know that CSA, sexual violence, right? So how do we prepare and actually prevent, like really prevent rather than having a knee jerk reaction to after the thing happened, because we already know it's going to happen, right? So to me, it's like uh, opening up a wider conversation, one, about community surviving and healing as a fucking community of world. The second is having a broader understanding of human sexuality and getting out of this fucking fear that is killing us. <laughs> and three, it's about, it's, it is about pushing against systems because in order for us to be in right relations with each other and right relations with the earth. It is about recognizing, acknowledging that systems of oppression are in place and we have to work very hard 
to try to eradicate them or you know make them known and fight against them and work intentionally because it's it's constant work it's never like hey i've done it i am great <laughs> i am not a whatever you know you can name all the things and it is like constantly working towards this and so for me sexy survivor is a great way to have people come together um not be afraid, <laughs> let go of shame, let go of fear, and really talk openly and honestly about our, our human sexuality and how, as survivors who have been violated in like almost the, like the worst way, um, how do we get to that place? How do we get to a place of loving ourselves and being in right relation? Exactly. And, you know, this is, I, I, I love the way that, um, you know, you talk about sex as, sex is about human connection, right? Sexu human sexuality is a, is a problem of human connection or, or you know, it, that's where it's at. And I don't think that is emphasized enough. Right. I feel like when we talk about, you know, between the two of us, we, we come from many movements of justice, from economic justice, environmental justice, immigration right. justice, racial justice. And, and, and both of us have landed around sex, like sexual liberation yeah. as part, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that, because like you said, sex is about human connection. If we can fix our relationships, if we can fix our connections, not only we can have good sex, we can have good relationships, we can heal ourselves, we can heal our community, and we can heal the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's our us to heal everything. Right. It, it takes collective effort to do that. But it just really reminds me of, you know, even as someone who's been a sex educator, I used to think being good at sex or having a good sex life was about, you know, how many toys I have, how many kink workshops I go to, and how many, you know, how can I show off my skills uh, to a partner? Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was that was being good at sex, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then what I discovered was that it is actually like how much can I connect to this person? It wasn't about, you know, it didn't matter if it was a one night stand or if it was a long term right. relationship. What it really matters is like how much can I be in my own skin, yeah. connect first of all to myself, and then hold the space and presence for the person or the people around me. Yeah. And that was the real challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really started understanding the depth of sexual trauma. Yeah. That like you're saying, it wasn't just because, you know, I was a survivor of adult rape. And that was, that was kind of like, okay, that's the thing. But it's like, I'm a survivor of rape culture, patriarchy, yeah. yeah. queerphobia, transphobia, and all the bullshit that I've had to kind of ingrain inside myself about what right. sex is about, what human connection is about, how do I tell someone what I need, what makes me happy and good mm -hmm. and people in my own elements, and how yeah. I can be there for them, make them comfortable to say that. Right. That was a real challenge, and that what made sex good. And that's this skill. Mm -hmm. that I want to see all of us think about, talk about, you right. know, and bring into our sex lives, our friendships, our relationships, all of that, mm -hmm. right? And that, I think that's the real gift of Sexy Survivor to me, mm -hmm. is Thank that it's not, it's, it's not about, yeah, it's not about like, you know, here is, you know, new techniques of how to have right, sex, right? right? It's like, this is, this is how you uh, discover yourself. This is how you connect with yourself. This is how you feel things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you mentioned and something not... really important, though, because you said at one point I thought this, is, was the, this was the right way to have sex. And, you know, I was thinking about that earlier and thinking about this, you know, um, live, you know, IG. And I was like, you know, um, I can think about from the very first time I did the first, you know, Sexy Survivor till now and still all the work that I've done. And what I was in sex, you know, in that time is completely different from now. So to me, it's not even about I was wrong. This, you know, I said that I thought this was about sex. The point is, this is your journey. At one point, that was working for you. Whether it was good for you or not, that was working for you. And now with more information and more healing, something else is working for you. And you're just going to keep on moving and changing because you're interacting with that constantly, right? So at first, I, I, I didn't want to even like uh, uh, participate in that thing like, oh, I'm just, I'm just still broken. I'm still not healed. That's, that's not it. Healing is action. It is constantly happening, right? And so it's like, oh, yeah, I'm in a different place than I was 10 years ago. And that feels good, right? 
uh, it's it's the checking in, it's the intentionality and not the this ambiguous thing when we're thinking about sexuality and sex. It's almost like this, you know, this magical thing that happens, which is bullshit, right? <laughs> Right, right. And I mean, that you mentioned wonderful uh, points here because like all of the things, you know, all the things we learn about how to have good sex. Um, I feel like like you're saying, the difference is I used to use my sexual skill to disconnect from myself, to not be in my body and to not have to have to deal with myself. Yeah you know, while having sex. And now I have these skills, but I approach it very differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, these skills are great, go learn them, it's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> but it's like, I was, I was using them as a tool. I'd be like, well, look, I can perform, mm -hmm. right? So I am good, I don't need to deal with myself. Right. And, and the healing, the healing is like, oh, sex is getting better, not because my skills are going, like, right. you know, getting higher, it's because I feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, I allow pleasure actually. I allow pleasure to my body. I allow presence in my body. Um, so anyway, these are all the wonderful conversations <laughs> I want to keep talking to you about, but we'll have more of them at, at our Sexy Survivor webinar. Yes. And uh, just so you know, so again, it's Saturday, September 18th, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. And we have a sliding scale tickets. Uh, I think we just ran out of our accessible free ones, but we still have some low income tickets left. And do go check back in case uh, we have run out because as folks are uh, buying uh, tickets that are gonna unlock more accessible and low income tickets, you may be able to get one of those as well. Um, and again, if you can afford it, please go ahead and purchase tickets uh, that can unlock more, um, you know, affordable tickets for folks who really want to be there. Um, and yeah, this is really exciting. And I'm looking forward to the webinar. Me too. Uh, coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, this webinar, you know, is like we said, it's, it's different from the workshops that we do. And hopefully when you get a good... Um, kind of a, a, a general idea of how we do it, we're gonna be offering in the future more specific sexy survivors to specific um, groups of people. So we might have a sexy survivor for masked people. We might have a sexy survivor for people who, have, who are survivors of child sexual abuse. Um, we might have one for people who are survivors of incest, right? So many different um, uh, groups of people that we can go re dig really deep within that, you know, that particular topic. Absolutely, yes. This is a kind of a one-time uh, special webinar that mm -hmm. is going to be offered, but maybe it will be very popular and we have to bring it back. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining Thank us. You. And uh, feel free to send us uh, a message if you have any questions or anything. And uh, we hope we can see you at Sexy Survivor webinar or uh, another program. Yeah. Bye, Take everybody. Good care. Bye.